All right, so we got our soldering iron. I went ahead and cut uh, some lengths of heat shrink. We've got smaller gauges here to go over the individual wires, a larger gauge to cover both of these terminations. Usually you'd, you'd probably wanna use a longer section of the larger gauge, uh, but I'm working with what I have available in my backpack and my hotel. Uh, so I've got my solder here, I've got my flux here, and then I've got the transformer we wanna cut. Uh, we're gonna cut it, or obviously this is arbitrary, so we're gonna cut it here. Uh, one thing to note, you wanna look at your wires and see if there's a differentiation. Uh, one of these wires has gray writing on it, the other is ribbed. We don't really care which one's positive and which one is negative. We just want to solder them back together the way that they were. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these apart just long enough to work with. And then I'm gonna take the long six foot cable and I'm going to snip off just the tip, hey -oh. And then I'm gonna discard the, the scrap wire here. <clears throat> so the tip that we just cut off, uh, we are going to split the wires. And then we're gonna go ahead and um, strip these down. Uh, at this point, we can go ahead and put over these two wires our encapsulating heat shrink. And I'm gonna get that as far away from where we're applying heat as possible. And then I'm gonna strip these back and over each wire, we'll put the smaller heat shrink tubes. So we got something like this. And then we're gonna strip off, I don't know, a quarter inch, whatever feels good and right to you. Um, more important than how much is consistency. Eventually you'll get the feel for it and you know these aren't perfect, but uh, they're pretty close. Um, I always give my wires a twist. There's a lot of different methods for soldering. Some people will take the two wires and push them into each other. Some people will twist them around each other. Uh, in the medical industry, at least, we are taught to use the lap method, which is when you take the two tend wires and you solder them together like this. Sorry, I can't tell if I'm in the frame. Uh, you solder them together next to each other. Uh, so anyway, that's the method that I use inside of working out. So I just stripped to the tip, and then I'm gonna strip about the same amount off of the brick side. You wanna be careful you don't cut into any strands because especially dealing with small wires like this, you know, if you lose three strands, that could be a quarter of the total capacity. So now we have our four bare leads. Um, again, there's one wire that's ribbed. That's this one and this one. And then this one has writing and this one has writing. So we're gonna solder these together like this. I don't use magic hands or whatever the hell they call helping hands. Uh, what does help is sticky tack, like blue tack. Uh, if you're familiar with it, it's like almost like bubble gum, but it's sticky. Um, I usually have a lot of it right here on the back of my solder uh, roll. So I could push these wires down into the blue tack. And then I would only be holding one, uh, one wire and the other would be held in place. Uh, but the way we're gonna do it today, because I don't have that, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up this iron. Uh, I'm just gonna set the iron down on its side. Um, we we'll wanna make sure that the end is tip, or the uh, tip is tinned, which basically means that there's a layer of solder on it. Um, a lot of people will use sponges and shit like that. The way I clean the tip, if it turns black and gets carboned up is I just stab it into cardboard. Uh, I'm working in the real world. I don't have access to all that shit and I can't carry it all with me. If you stab this hot tip into a cardboard box, it'll clean it right up. So we're gonna take all four of our wires, which have been twisted, and we're just gonna dip them into the flux just to give them a coating. The idea with the flux is that we're gonna use the solder to turn these stranded connections into solid joints and then melt them together. So they're all, um, they all have flux applied now. I'm probably gonna set off my hotel smoke alarm here. I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron. The flux itself is what'll smoke a lot. Um, so we're gonna take the rib side. Uh, and basically each wire we just put flux on, we're gonna push up against into the, the pool of flux. We're not gonna keep it on too long, but you wanna make sure that the solder has penetrated all the way around so it looks like a solid band. And we're gonna do that with all four of these before we join them. 
where I'm gonna add a little more solder to the tip. All right, if you're working in a confined space, you'll wanna be a lot more conscious of how, um, how long you're applying heat because that heat will travel up and melt your heat shrink. So I'm gonna take our rib sides. Um, these are all tinned now, as you can see, the ends are, are solid and uh, the solder has flowed throughout. Um, we're gonna take the, the rib side and we'll do a little more solder here. I'm gonna see if I can't do it on top so you can see what's happening. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work, but basically the lap method is we'll put them right next to each other, heat them up until the solder pools and then pull it away. Um, I don't like the way that that joint came out looking because I did it on top, so I'm actually gonna run underneath and you'll see it's a lot faster too. And you wanna be careful not to get any jagged edges the way I do it, uh, once it melts, I generally slide it off the side instead of straight down. It gives it less of a chance to create any um, spikes or uh, anything else that could tear through the heat shrink. So that's one side of it. And then the other will do the exact same. And sometimes you gotta melt them a couple times to get them just right. This isn't perfect, but it's passable. Again, there's nothing poking out that would um, hurt the heat shrink. There's a little tip right there and you can take your flush cutters and at this point you know this is a solid um, chunk of solder rather than a bunch of individual wires so you can cut off pieces um, as needed. I probably just made it worse there but for demonstration's sake we'll keep going. I'm going to turn the soldering iron off before the smoke alarm goes on. Uh, once they've cooled down You'll move the uh, small sections of, of heat shrink over your solder joints. Uh, an advanced method would be to stagger where the joints are. So cut one side shorter on this end and then this side shorter on that end. Um, but really, as long as you're using high quality heat shrink and you're not leaving any jagged edges, you're fine. So we'll apply heat to melt these. And rotate. All right, we'll give those just a minute to cool down. But at this point, ow, fuck. I just put my hand right into the hot iron. At this point, we have a, a five volt, two amp power brick with a much shorter cable. Uh, the one thing I really like to do, I mean, you'd be fine with just these joints here, uh, but I do like to put a section of larger heat shrink over both joints. What I usually do is cut this section long enough to cover the parts that are separated. So I would have, ideally, it would have been long enough to cover from here all the way to here because I split the wires apart quite a bit. But I'm working with what I got for demo sake. So we'll shrink the uh, larger section down. I just kind of grabbed a couple of things from my toolbox last minute when I was at work. Um, I like the jet style torch lighters better, but there we have um, our two connections, uh, soldered, heat shrunk, and then heat shrunk together. Um, and that's the way we would do it in an operating room uh, for five volt power supplies that do fiber to DVI conversion for 10, 20 years. Hope that helped.